In this brief video, we're going to discuss evaluating intoing in children. And to do so requires uh, first a diagnosis. And this is to determine the problem uh, site that exists as the femur or the tibia may be involved. And for intoing, uh, in, it's often due to metatarsus adductus, to toe abduction, to internal tibial torsion, or internal femoral torsion, or sometimes referred to as increased antiversion syndrome. Whereas external rotation is often due to infantile outtoying, tibial external tibial torsion, or femoral retroversion, or external femoral torsion. It's essential to establish a diagnosis, and we do this by the rotational profile examination. Because this gives us a diagnosis so we can predict the future, it reassures the parent, and it also identifies the rare problems that might require treatment later on. There are some things we should know. First of all, the in normal growth and development, both the femur and the tibia externally rotate. And this is normal pattern. And this results in some natural histories. And we look at metatarsus seductus, it gets better usually in the first couple of years. Internal tibial torsion gets better over the next well, first four or five years. And femoral antiversion or, re, or uh, anatorsion tends to get worse during our early childhood, peaks off in mid-childhood, and then tends to get better and resolves in nearly all the cases. And we know this because of the normal values based on natural history. And we did this by studying about a thousand extremities and normal uh, children and a few adults. And we measured their various uh, angles. Uh, as shown here in green is a normal range and red is average. And we looked at this for the foot progression angle, for the hip rotation, or for the thigh foot angle on the tibia. The other thing one should know is that the uh, rotation is different and symmetry is different uh, in parts of the extremity. For example, hip rotation is nearly always symmetrical, whereas the tibia is often asymmetrical. And that's probably due to the fact this may be an internal tibial torsion, may be due to the intrauterine position. We start with a screening examination, which has been the subject of a previous YouTube video. And to look, make sure there are no other problems present. And we establish the rotational profile, which tells us where the problem is and how severe it is. And we start up by watching the child walk for mentioned. We do hip rotation and the thigh foot angle. And first of all, we estimate the, uh, the, the foot progression angle. This is the angle between the axis of the foot and the line of progression. And one does this by observing the child walking and then focusing on one foot at a time and estimating the number of degrees of internal rotation or out, out toying of the child. And then we compare this with the normal values. And the normal value is that there's a lot of uh, variety in terms of how much the to kid toes in or tones out, and that it tends to remain relatively constant overall through most of infancy and childhood. We next do the prone examination for hip rotation. We put the child <clears throat> prone on the exam table or on the parent's lap, and we measure the amount of internal rotation, as shown in red, and external rotation by slightly flexing more leg, leg than the other so they cross and we get the external rotation. And if we get our values here and we compare these with the normal range, we see that internal rotation tends to increase over the over childhood, early childhood, peaks out in mid childhood and it gets better. And this explains the natural history of increased femoral aniversion. Whereas the external rotation of the hip is greatest in the newborn and tends to rapidly decline explaining why the so-called infant out-towing is resolved spontaneously and is so very common. So these normal values are very important to keep in mind. We next look down on top of the uh, leg with the knee flexed at 90 degrees and look at the thigh foot angle, which is a comparison between the axis of the thigh in red and the axis of the foot in, in green. Often the kid's wiggling around, one has to estimate this value, but just put, let it hang, and when the child's relaxed, then use that as the measure. And also look at the lateral border of the foot to see whether it's straight. If we look at the thigh foot angle, we see that there's 
there tends to turn in a little bit more as in, in early infancy and in newborn, and then gradually gets better. And this explains why internal tibial torsion resolves with time. And also we look to see whether there's a presence of, of adduction of the forefoot. The so-called metatarsus adductus is this pattern, whereas there's a convexity to the lateral border of the foot, and you see this greater on this left side than on the right side. Now, this is left to a child's prone. And uh, it may be symmetrical or slightly asymmetrical. And this is also a flexible deformity. One can easily push the foot over and correct this. This is a positional deformity and tends to get better just with time. Another toe problem that we see in, in infants is a so-called searching toe. Uh, this is the, where the great toe adducts or abducts, how you want to define, pulls in with a child walking. And it's a dynamic deformity. It's not present at birth or at rest and resolves spontaneously as these muscles get better balanced by in, in, in increasing maturation. The most common thing is internal tibial torsion. Uh, you'll note in this infant, both feet turn in relative to the thigh, uh, and it's often asymmetrical with the left side being worse. It resolves during infancy and early childhood, as we mentioned before. And even if it doesn't completely resolve, a little bit of residual may enhance the running ability of children, we've shown in a previous study. Finally, in towing can be due to the increased femoral antiversion, femoral torsion. And this is where the uh, internal rotation gets up in the 80 to 90 degree range, usually in mid-childhood. And there's limited external rotation that's concomitant with that. It's symmetrical, maybe familial, as seen in this case with the mother and the child both sitting in the same posture. This posture is due uh, to, the, to the position that's more comfortable. It's not the cause or it doesn't perpetuate it. But it is seldom severe enough to create any problems. This mother was totally asymptomatic uh, as, and she had the same appearance with the child, so that was reassuring. And, and nearly always resolved and doesn't require any specific treatment. So in summary then, it's important to determine the diagnosis of in-towing or out-towing. And it's done by the physical examination, we call it the rotational profile. And knowing the diagnosis provides us with a prognosis, understanding what's going to happen. And nearly all in-towing resolves spontaneously. And the so-called treatment by special shoe inserts or braces or exercise or limiting sitting position are both unnecessary and ineffective and therefore should be avoided. And only very, very rarely is increased femoral antiversion persistent in dis disabling and requiring treatment after the age of 10 years. So if you want more uh, of our free healthcare publications, go to our website. We have PDF downloads of most of the publications. We have videos on YouTube with a list. And we have DD, the DV libraries where there are uh, no internet availability. So I thank you for watching this video. And please send me any comments to staley at uw.edu.